death. This is tremendously important to think about. We put it off. Death is swept under the carpet in our culture, in the hospital. They try to keep you alive as long as possible in utter desperation. They won't tell you that you're going to die. They, uh, when their relatives have to be informed that it's a hopeless case, they say, don't tell this to the patient. And all the relatives come around with hollow grins and say, well, you'll be all right in about a month, and then we'll go and have a holiday somewhere and sit by the sea and uh, listen to the birds and whatnot. And the dying person knows that this is mockery. Well, of course, we've made death howl with all kinds of ghouls. We've invented dreadful afterlives. I mean, the Christian version of heaven is as abominable as the Christian version of hell. I mean, nobody wants to be in church forever. <laughs> Children are absolutely horrified when they hear these hymns which say, Prostrate before thy throne to lie and gaze and gaze on thee. They can't imagine what this imagery means. So the idea of what might happen after death. Well, you're going to be faced with your judge. The one who knows all about you. This is Big Papa who knows you were a naughty boy and a very naughty girl, especially girl, from the beginning of things. He's going to look right through to the core of your inauthentic existence. And what kind of heebie-jeebies may come up? Or you may be, believe in reincarnation, and you think that uh, your next life will be uh, the rewards and the punishments for what you've done in this life. And you know you've got away with murder in this life. And the most awful things are going to happen next time around. So you look upon death as a catastrophe. <laughs> then there are other people who say, well, when you're dead, you're dead. <laughs> Just no, nothing going to happen at all. So what you got to worry about? Well, we don't quite like that idea. Because it spooks us. You know, what would it be like to die? To go to sleep and never, never, never wake up? Well, a lot of things it's not going to be like. <laughs> it's not going to be like being buried alive. It's not going to be like being in the darkness forever. I tell you what, it's going to be like as if you never had existed at all. Not only you, but everything else as well. That just there was never anything and there's no one to regret it. And there's no problem. Well, think about that for a while. It's kind of a weird feeling you get when you really think about that. You really imagine it. Just to stop altogether. And you can't even call it stop. Because you can't have stop without start. And there wasn't any start. There's just no thing. Well, then when you come to think of it, that's the way it was before you were born. I mean, if you go back in memory, as far as you can go, you get to the same place. As you go forward in your anticipation of the future as to what it's going to be like to be dead. Then you get these your funny ideas. That this blankness is the necessary counterpart of what we call being. Now, we all think we're alive, don't we? I mean, we're really here? That there is something called existence? You know, the existentialist, Dasein, Throneless, ah, you know, here we are. But how could you be experiencing that as a reality unless you had once been dead? How, what gives us any ghost of a notion that we're here? except by contrast with the fact that we once weren't. And later on, weren't we? But this thing is a cycle, like positive and negative poles in electricity.